Would you like to be able to create a professional, beautiful looking resume like this one? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. Hello YouTube, I'm the Career Doctor. I'm here to help you manage your career right here on YouTube. And today we're going to be looking at a resume builder. I'm going to talk to you about what a resume builder is and why it could be extremely useful to you in your job application or your career search. And I'm going to show you how you can use one to make a beautiful professional looking resume just like the, the one you can see right here on your screen right now. So today we are going to be looking at a new resume builder that's available called Novo Resume. Here it is popping up. A resume builder for 2019 and I think it provides a really fresh interesting look and take on resume builders. If you do a search for like resume builder, CV builder, online CV maker, that sort of thing, you'll find 10s, 20s, 30s, different kind of web applications out there. And they all tend to take on the same format. You pay a certain amount of money to use them, say for a month or three months, and they help you to put together a nice looking resume, much better than you could probably do yourself using something like Microsoft Word. Uh, and on a par with what say a professional graphic designer might come up with for you as well. Now, I always think that a resume is a little bit like a gourmet meal. It has to both have the correct ingredients in it, in the correct order, but it also has to look good for an employer to want to pick it up and read it and digest it. And I think resume builders, CV builders can be an effective way of both organizing your content in a way that's the right, correct way to present to employers, but also to give that nice look and feel. You will find when you look at these uh, applications, some do one of those things better than the other sometimes, and some put more of a focus on the look, and some put more of a focus on helping you with the content. And I think the best ones do both. Uh, and that's why I'm excited by this new product, because I think it helps to do both things for you quite nicely. Being someone who helps others develop their resume in the professional world, I've looked at a number of resume builders, including ZT, uh, Visual CV, CV Maker, and Resume Genius, and there's a bunch more out there. And I've used a number of these to help both make my own personal resume as well as make resumes for other folks. You might say, well, what are some of the alternatives to using a resume builder? Well, I guess one alternative would be to make your own resume yourself. And certainly you can do that in a program like Microsoft Word and you can invest in maybe buying a fairly cheap template to help you out with that or using a free template. However, you just don't quite tend to land it and nail it in the way that I think looks just more professional that you need to do in this day and age. So that's one way of going with it. I know a number of people who might use a free tool uh, like Canva, which is kind of a, a general platform for a bunch of different graphic design. I think you can get a nice effect with Canva, but in my experience, it takes a lot of time to format it and you're dragging and dropping things around and nudging things about. And every time you wanna come back and make a big change, it can be difficult to sort of make the text fill the box and uh, it can be a bit of a nightmare to update your resume, in my opinion, on Canva. And it's free, but at a certain point, you might find that you want to have to pay for some of the premium things in Canva, so it's not exactly free. And then your other option might be to go to a professional resume writer. Uh, and certainly that's something that I do do for a number of clients. I help them write their resumes. But the challenge there is you're often paying a lot more money. You're paying for someone's time. Uh, you're definitely going to get a level of expertise in terms of things like wordsmithing your achievements and making sure you've got a clear value proposition for the employer, that sort of stuff. But it's going to cost you a lot more at the end of the day. And so if you feel comfortable that you know how you should put together a resume and the sort of content that should be on the resume, maybe you don't need to go that extra level by investing in a professional to do it for you. The other disadvantage is generally they provide you with the resume, but again, the next time you want to come back and change it, uh, you've got to pay them again to make some more changes. So we're going to have a look here at Novo Resume. Now, about a month ago, the developers of Novo Resume reached out to me and said, Hi, Anthony, we really like some of the material you're doing on YouTube. Uh, we're wondering if you wouldn't mind reviewing uh, our new product for us. And so this is a sponsored video. In fact, it's my very first sponsored video on YouTube. Yay. But I'm going to endeavor to give you my own impression uh, and... Uh, what I said to Andre at Novo Resume was, I'm going to give a warts and all impression of this. You know, if I find anything in this 
product that I think might need some improvement or some issues. I'm going to give you a chance to respond to that, but I'm going to give my audience my overall impression of the product and whether I think it's a good fit for you guys. The first thing you can see when you come to the landing page, however, it's a really nice, well set out, fresh type of style of landing page. One of the things I particularly like about where they're heading with their product is they do give you some information about pricing up front. What you notice with some of these online resume builders is they try and sort of drag you in to do a free version then they tell you how much it might, be, might cost you to download the resume once you put all that effort in. So it's an online resume maker, it's both a CV maker and an online resume maker. You can see that there are templates, in fact we can have a look at that. So they give you a bit of an idea about the sort of templates that you might get, the style and structure. So the different templates and you'll see that some have photos on them and some don't. And in fact use any of these templates and remove that photo you can remove the profile it's quite customizable and those of you who've seen most of my videos know that I recommend it particularly for a professional resume that you don't put a photo on your resume for a bunch of reasons but you can sort of get the style and feel for what they look like uh, I've got CV templates I think I feel for people doing these platforms because in one part of the world they'll talk about a resume and another part of the world they'll talk about a CV and in fact they tend to mean the same thing but you'll see there's again different sort of formats for the CV here available so you've got about 16 different styles of template but again the colors the fonts a whole lot of bunch of stuff is actually customizable so you can uh, build a cover letter so you can kind of link that with the branding of your resume that you've chosen which is great so again you get a bit of a feel for the sort of style of cover letter that you can build as well. Uh, cover letters I believe are only available in, when you pay for the product, but we'll, we'll, sh we'll talk about that shortly. So let's go back to the home page and let's see what other information they provide. And there's a bit of an introductory video, which I'm not gonna play for you guys. Again, sort of examples of the resumes, what the key advantages are. So they say that a resume layout with visual appeal, creative professional layout will stand out with recruiters. And I think that's true. Getting back to that gourmet meal uh, analogy, uh, it's gotta have the right content, but no one's gonna really wanna look at it if it looks lousy and crappy. They also build in this platform the ability to get feedback through some automated systems and some videos and recommendations and I think that's really helpful. You can swap between templates and it doesn't affect your content and both actually free cover letter and resume samples that you can use and lots of other benefits. So you can try this out for free and where the limitation is you can only get a one page resume which is going to be pretty limited for most people, certainly the people that I work with generally, which are mainly doctors, develop multiple versions and you can store content and you can actually store part of your content and drag and drop it into different versions. And I think that's useful, particularly when you're going for different types of jobs where it's always important to tailor your resume or CV to the job that you're applying for. You can see there's custom layouts, three page resume. Now this is where I've fed back to the developers and I'm pleased to, res to give an answer to this. I've said to them, look, I think in all honesty, three pages for a resume is quite limiting for a number of people, particularly in the professional arena. You know, a lot of people say on the internet, you should try and get it down to two pages, even one page. Uh, I think a resume should, should certainly be short, but it should be as long as it needs to be. And if there's important information there, you should be succinct about it. But eventually, particularly if you've had a pretty long career as a professional and you're listing things like various work history, publications, projects you've been involved in, it's going to spill out over three pages. And so there's an ex expectation for a certain amount of content in some jobs. Anyway, I'm told that they're going to lift the barrier on that in an upcoming version uh, and to around about 10 pages, which should suit most people. Cover letters included and more features, and we'll have a look at them shortly. So then you can kind of look at the premium plan or just go in and write your cover letter and some testimonials and uh, where people have got their jobs, etc. There's also a blog with some uh, helpful tips around careers and CV and resume writings, that sort of stuff. So we're going to dive in shortly, but I just wanted to show you the pricing because I'm glad that they're being upfront about this because you often, as I see, you can't even find the pricing for things like Visual CV uh, hides it until you sign up that. So a, a lot of them make it a little bit difficult to work out how much you might be up for. So you can see here, you can sign up for free and build yourself a one page resume with a number of layouts uh, and do all that for free and print it off uh, in a PDF format. But if you're wanting to really get the total value out of it, then uh, you need to sign up to a plan. Uh, I think this is a reasonable rate comparing most of the other ones out there. They're all on the sort of par of this pricing, but for most people when you're in the job market, you've probably got about a three month cycle where you're deciding to apply for jobs, putting in applications, going through the process and hopefully successfully landing it. So often they have like a three month plan uh, and that's $30 US, which I think is pretty reasonable when you compare it to say, you know, if you're looking at starting point, looking for say a professional writer or 
graphic designer to help you lay out your CV, you're probably looking, at least in Australia, I'm going to do Australian dollars, maybe $500 at a starting point for that. So certainly much more affordable, cheaper than signing up to Canva for a year, I think, as well. So what I'm going to do is I've been given access to a premium plan, a paid plan for Nova Resume. So I'm just going to hop into that and take you through some of the features and show you how you can build a really nice resume. So here we are inside Nova Resume. You can see that I'm now signed up to an account page. It's the same landing page, obviously, but I'm going to show you through what you get when you sign up and register and pay for the premium features. So you've got an account profile. You can upload a photo, which you can also then use in your resume if you choose to go down that road. I certainly wouldn't recommend it, as I say, for professionals. So this, this program, this Nova Resume, again, like most others, is a personal resume builder. So it's not set up to make multiple different versions for different people. If you change the name here, it will change with all the previous documents, the CVs, cover letters that you've generated. You've got a, obviously got an email, uh, and that's pretty much it. Then we click on this very obvious button called My Documents, and this takes us into the actual resume builder itself. Uh, so you can see I've been having a play around with it with different formats, and that's the one that I just showed you. And I'm gonna take you through how you can build that resume quite quickly. So you've basically got your resumes and your cover letters. So if you've generated a cover letter, which I haven't done yet, that will show there, and that'll show you how many documents created. So you've got, you can create up to 18 versions of both. I'm not sure if it says default language. I think that's meant to be the number of documents. So within this resume space, we've got a couple of things. You've obviously got the existing resumes that you may have made in different formats. The other thing is you've got this thing over here called My Content Beta, your place for the data you most or used most often. And I think it's a very handy feature for a resume builder. So I'll show you what that looks like. So basically you can store information like your job title, a career profile or personal summary, contact details. So you can have your Twitter account, you have your LinkedIn, etc. work history, projects, things like volunteering, which could be your observerships. And by the way, these headings are customizable in the actual resume. So you don't have to stick with something like volunteering. So for example, if you're doing publications and research is a better heading for you you can actually change that and you can have publications in there you can also have teaching activities skills uh, you can either have just broad skills or we can have non-technical skills what they call soft skills i would call them cognitive skills technical skills even languages then you've got your education so your formal education conferences certificates if you have them references as well i think they could probably do a little bit around the references i'll talk about that later in terms of the formatting and style uh, and this thing called personality which is not what you'd think it was it's about listing organizations that you're involved in so like memberships and things like that other interests you might have or causes that you're involved in that sort of thing. There's a handy FAQ section for all parts of it. So if you're needing help, you can get it that way. The other thing I point out is there's a contact us button here. Uh, so you can get in uh, touch with the crew. So that's the My Content Better. And we will use that shortly to show how quickly you can do a new resume if you've got some of that existing information already in there. So let's go through the process of building a resume. Okay, so you can see that your two options for creating a resume type document are your resume or your CV. And they've divided this somewhat arbitrarily, I think, into the sort of nought to five years experiences, resume, five plus is CV. In essence, what we're going for in both cases is actually a resume because as you will see in other videos, I might link one here. Uh, the difference between a resume and a CV is a resume is a tailored, synthesized document. CV officially is a curriculum by two, which means course of life, which actually means all of your career and everything. Generally, when employers are asking for CVs, at least in the countries like Australia, US, Canada, UK, that sort of thing, we're not actually asking for a CV according to the official definition. We're actually asking for more like a resume anyway. So I guess one of the reasons you might want to hop between the two is if you've got a template that you like in one better than the other. But we're going to kick off with making a resume here. We click this button and you can see our first thing we have to do is decide on our template. Now, you're not locked into it. You can actually start with one and then go to a different one if you think that's better and actually you can make quite a few changes with the format of these templates as well so they're saying that using the following resume templates increases your chances of being interviewed so they're trying to point to the fact that there's a way of designing your resume that calls attention to it from the employer but also makes it easier for them to find the key content that they're looking for so we are going to pick a template and the one we're going to go for i sometimes go i like I do like the look of functional. However, I would prefer that this section, the skills section, 
uh, actually go over the right. The reason being is that the key content that I think needs to be on the first page for the resumes that I'm involved in is there are things like work experience and that needs a bit more column space. See that you have a choice between two columns or one column. One column can work quite nicely in some situations as well. So I'm going to pick this one called creative. That will be similar to the one that I showed you uh, at the start of the video. So the first thing we notice here is we've got the template uh, and it's already pre-populated things based on obviously your name and information you've given it already. You have to hover over things to see what happens and so you can see here that I've got uh, ability to add in. I can also put my country city address. I don't tend to think that's necessary uh, for most people. If you're applying for a job in a different country and you're in another country, Maybe that's relevant. You can also add your social. The ones that I tend to suggest people put uh, for professional resumes uh, tend to only mainly be your LinkedIn. And you only have to have the, um, the vanity component of the profile as well, which is uh, handy, it makes it shorter. You might include your Twitter, uh, you know, for other like, prof you know, creative resumes I see having a website, uh, Facebook, all those sort of things is quite useful as well. So this is what you got in terms of options. If your platform's not there, there isn't an option to add it at this point. I imagine they may be thinking about creating more. So we're going to save that so you can see immediately we've got some changes there. We've got our LinkedIn profile and our phone number. Uh, we can actually change the uh, email address without it affecting our account profile, which is good. So we might just put that in Dr. J. Jones. By the way, I always recommend having a professional email address. If possible, get your own domain name, fairly cheap, and add some email to it. That can always kind of make it even look more professional for you. So we're going to save that. Okay, we need to obviously populate all this stuff, and I'm going to just show you how there's some handy tools to do that. Uh, so under work experience, you can see we've got this uh, thing where we can either add a job, so we can add a title here, or we can... Uh, add some content. In fact, we can actually even change this heading to something else if we wanted to. So I'm going to just put that as career history and then I can add a job. Uh, senior registrar, uh, Royal Prince Alfred Hospital 2016 and then 2016. And then you can put some information about your responsibilities. Coordinated all physician training rosters in charge of 25 physician preparing for examinations. So you can add some achievements and responsibilities there. You can even have a contact person if you want. I don't tend to recommend you need to do that. Uh, you have a chance in your references to put some contact people. And so that's uh, there now. But you can also, if you've used the content field, you can add additional information. You can see here, I've done some additional jobs for certain things. So we're going to add in the endocrinology fellow role. And you can see because it recognized the date was later it put it up top so already put it in reverse chronological order for you and we're going to add in also this advanced trainee role here as well so all of a sudden we've got three pieces of career history there for us added in quite quickly because we've saved some of that already i often advise people to keep an actual proper curriculum vitae a complete record of their career somewhere stored on file maybe in a word document i often my personal, personally, the way I store a lot of this information now these days is through having a complete LinkedIn profile and maybe updating it every three or four months with, uh, you could have this as your complete store and just keep it updated and keep all this stuff in the bank so they can be putting it in uh, each time you're going for a new job, which is quite handy because a lot of people are probably going for new jobs these days every, every one to two years anyway. So then we can populate other things like our education so I'm just going to pull in some things here uh, we can put in our skills from our content don't have any personal projects so we're not going to add anything in there however what we need to do now is because each template varies in terms of what by default it 
once you do include, we need to include some more stuff. But before we do that, I'm just going to fix up some formatting issues here because I don't think we're giving enough attention to this important side. So you can see here with these percentages, we can actually adjust that. We can make it smaller. We don't want that. We make it a bit larger. We actually want a 0%. So this is basically your column settings. So I'm actually going to push this all the way over to the side to give us a bit more air and room to breathe. I'm also going to fix up a few other things. I'm going to put in the title again from the content. We've got a uh, career profile section there as well. Now this is probably one of the areas I think they could look at improving. They'll give you a count in terms of how many characters they think you should have and I've got 63 to burn there. So I understand this is based on trying to have a short pithy call to action but again often in professional resumes you want maybe three good paragraphs about the value proposition what you bring to the organization you know can you bring in new clients uh, new leads new revenue can you optimize things uh, can you create new value the other sort of things that people want to know about in terms of considering you for a job you know your, your key skills and abilities to solve problems highlighting some key examples from your career that often takes a few paragraphs and what you're trying to do there is control the narrative you're essentially giving the reader of the resume uh, an executive summary and when you understand that most resumes are only looked at for a few seconds if you've got an executive summary there you've actually controlled the narrative because they've read that uh, and they've made up in their minds based on that summary based on the story that you've told what you're about who you're about and that's a very powerful way of selling yourself if you do that profile correctly so i would sort of like to see that there's a bit more space here to do that and that you can you can actually format that so there's no ability to put line breaks etc and possibly even be able to drop that down here uh, again i've fed this back to the developers and they're happy to take that on board and look at that in future versions and while we're here we're also going to do something with a photo i think i've uh, left that too long so we're going to look at the the settings so we can actually change your photo settings by the way and we'll show you how you can change the colors in a second but i'm going to go into settings uh sorry actually layout that's right and you can see here you've got the options to get rid of your title so as the title's gone um to bring that back you can get rid of the summary so you don't have to have a summary uh, i'm going to add that back in uh, and you can get rid of your photo so that's much better but you would have also noticed that you've got this sort of layout here where you can move things around so we've got work education on the side we've got skills we don't want projects however i would like teaching i would like uh, publications i would like references oh we've got skills already that's what i was looking for and we might also include certificates here. So we've now included a few other sections, and that's what they call them, uh, to add into our resume. The last thing we're going to do though is look at uh, changing the colors around a bit. So I like a call to action orange color sometimes, so we can see how that looks. Uh, and so there you go, I get a, a blue and a, a kind of red. Problem there is kind of a bit too much color going on there, so let's just see what else we can do with that. So that's the color combo again probably a little bit more color combo here particularly when you're going for two theme colors uh, but some of them is just one so that makes it a little bit easier um, so i like the black there it helps to stand out and draw the eye to this we can also change our font um, so we've got a few op options there and even more if we wanted again i go for a sound serif so without the little bits on the end of the le letters there so Maybe we'll go with, I think we'll just go back to, I think it was over Roboto, or was it? Oh, Railway. I think it might have been Railway before. You can have, you can change the font size, but it changes it for all sections you see there. So it can be large, medium, small. I think medium is good. That's about it from a settings perspective. We're going to uh, just fill in the rest of these sections that are now blank. So we've got a publication. So the way you delete something, by the way, is you have to get out of the My Content and using just delete that bucket uh, and then we've got a referee to drag in as well okay so there we are we're almost done i'm going to add in a few things here because i think it's useful to have your short qualifications now you could have them here in fact we do have the fracp but i'm going to add in 
do this. And that's that. I'm going to add another one. FRACP. I'll move that up in chronology. You could put the dates there, obviously. In fact, we might just do that as well. 2019. And you don't have to have a start and end date if you don't want to. Uh, 2008. So we'll just have it like that. The other thing I like to include, just to make it a bit easier for the employers, again, you can have it up here or down here, uh, is your, uh, your medical registration number. So, uh, and so you can include that as well. So there you might put your things like if you're an international doctor, your AMC certificate. Often it's good to, if you're needing to produce an English language test, it's good to highlight that there as well if that's a condition that we're looking for in um, the job selection. And so we're almost done. But I wanted to point out a couple of features here before we do go. So you'll see over the side here, you've got an option to share this online. So you can generate a shareable link. So what they're saying here is, you can use this to share with someone else to get some feedback, but they're not recommending that you send it to a recruiter. You should send the PDF version instead. Interesting, I've seen other applications where they encourage a shareable link uh, so you can get some analytics as to how many people are looking at your resume. Uh, so you could link it to your LinkedIn profile uh, and I guess recruiters would be looking at it there. So let's just have a look at what happens there. So I've just updated my resume and others can rate it share it within your network and gain some feedback on it. So I might just actually leave the link up uh, and others can see the finished product in the description below. Give it a rating if you like. Bear in mind this is not a real applicant. It's based on characteristics of a number of applicants that I have worked with uh, over the years. So you can actually give feedback on various sections like uh, here I could say really love the career profile straight to the point um, need some more publications so that's the shareable link so that's to get feedback from others on your resume then we have some video tips uh, and tips text tips and video tips so this is relating to the fact that we're in the publication section so it's giving you some tips on include only the publications that are relevant to the job industry you're applying for think about articles that might have been published in newspapers or blog sites for example as well and then there's a video list where you can get some more tips about the various sections so this one will be on on the work experience we also have uh, quick access to your content. And then the last, which is a really super powerful part of this platform, is uh, they give you a review of your resume. Now, obviously, this is done through not real people sitting there watching your resume or looking at your resume as you make it, but based on a lot of data and content that's been collected and understanding of what makes and breaks a resume. Now, it has, you know, it's, it's not always going to be specific to your industry. Like I work in health, there were some specific things to resumes. I mentioned one of them, the fact that often resumes are a little bit longer in the medical profession. But again, I find some of the, uh, the tips useful here. So there's some suggestions in the general section. Less is more so they're suggesting that I'd be a bit more concise with the uh, career profile. I'm going to ignore that. The work history, use actions, verbs, numbers, and percentages. And I think I'm really a big fan of this. So and I would agree here so far, we don't have a lot of quantifiable results here. Uh, and then there's a links, links to articles sometimes that helps you with how to write achievements. Again, I think that's the, you know, use actions, verbs, numbers, and percentage. So this is a common thing, a problem I see with the resumes that I review and rewrite for people that we have to kind of struggle to kind of get quantifiable achievements from someone's career history certificates uh, date should be included okay we can fix that so well that's current uh, maybe that's from was well, specialist registration so it's just happened so we go put that there uh, and you get tips on your publication less is more so this is about keeping a resume under one page now I would feedback to the developers I think uh, over egging that one I would suggest that uh, it's around for uh, an intern doctor in Australia, you can generally get it to two pages. Anyone after that is usually, so that's first year. Anyone after that's usually three or four for a few years, and then it might even get longer. But helpful suggestions. Uh, and then also some suggested revisions. So better layout structure advice. Recruiters recommend that work 
experience and skills or technical skills should be the first section of your resume. I'm not sure why that's popping up because that's actually what I've got there. But anyway, punctuation, that's inconsistent. So that picks up, you know, like small details can make a difference. Uh, and particularly in a job where attention to detail is important, like medicine. So now I've fixed that one up. Including the city is recommended. Okay. And the suggesting when your resume is longer than one page, you, you go to a one column layout to improve readability. I get that. I take that on board. I think, though, with the resumes I'm dealing with, the key thing is to actually get all the really good, juicy stuff on the front page, the first page. And often we're talking about three or four pages. Uh, so often the two columns allows you to do that. It would be nice if you could switch from two columns then on the first page and then one column on the rest. Uh, that would be good too. I've got the contact uh, here. They're recommending a few more achievements for that job. I wonder what if would happen if, well, so that's the third job. So, you know, at that point, people starting, the recruiters, the employers are starting to get a little bit bored with reading your work history anyway. They want to know what your achievements have been in your most recent jobs. And then teaching yes we haven't included the teaching so let's just drop our teaching in okay that one in as well there we go come back and see how many reds and yellows we've got uh skills suggesting five skills so we could fix that advanced uh yeah that is it so we've taken on board their suggestions uh, some which I thought were quite useful and picked up on a couple of typographical errors. Uh, and what we now can do is download our CV. Obviously, I haven't got the full career history, the full education here, but we've got a CV with all the correct content. Let's find out if Jay Jones <laughs> exists. No, they don't. So there you have your nice PDF version of your new resume. Nice colors, nice fonts, well laid out, all the key content on the front page, clickable links, all done very simply without having to do your own tricky graphic design uh, using Novo Resume. I really like this product. I can see it becoming even better with some good community feedback. There's obviously a few key things missing here. Firstly is the ability to go more than three pages. I think that needs to be sorted. Some ability to customize and perhaps drop the profile into the actual body of the resume would be nice. Not a deal breaker. Uh, I do notice also that the layout for the references is possibly not what's required in academic circles. So maybe ad adhering to like a Vancouver style referencing format or something like that would be good. Again, not a key deal breaker. I definitely can already recommend this for a doctor who might be looking for a three-page resume. And I'd probably recommend it for other doctors who need a slightly longer resume or CV once they fix that page barrier. So that's Novo Resume. Check it out.